unique privately owned institution of higher education has been making a name for itself by discussing real issues. For the past few years, it has been offering seminars understanding in the subject of human liberty. Let's visit a colleague, Robert Lefebvre, is taking up one of the truly vital issues of our time. What do responsibility and obligation really mean? One of the interesting areas that concerns most of us at this time is the area of responsibility. And today I've noticed that many people seem to be uh, a little confused about what uh, this interesting word means. Responsibility, as you'll note, has a prefix RE. And RE uh, in the Latin means to go back or to repeat again. So when we're talking about responsibility, we're actually talking about being responsible for something that has happened in the past. A responsibility always relates to what has gone on before. I'll tell you what the problem is, however. So many people today seem to feel that responsibility is uh, something that belongs to the group. We hear about uh, social responsibility, uh, group responsibility, the idea that um, uh, somehow a community is responsible. Uh, for instance, uh, a young man may do something that we wouldn't approve. For instance, uh, let's suppose he uh, robs a filling station. We'll hear it said, well, the community is responsible. Or possibly um, his school is responsible. Or his church. Or um, his grandmother. Or anybody but the young man who did it. But the fact is, the young man is responsible. The word itself means this because the word turns us back to the man who actually did it. This is what it relates to, responsible. Uh, there's another way of looking at it that uh, uh, I think is interesting and might be helpful. When we think of responsibility, think of ownership. It's actually a word denoting ownership. When a person is responsible, it merely means that he owns a piece of the action that has already occurred. It always relates to the past. Now, there's another word that we use that is also being a little bit confused and uh, bandied about today that uh, leads to some uh, very interesting errors, I think, in judgment. And this is the word obligation. Uh, the word, or the prefix, OB, means to face or toward. And an obligation is always something that lies ahead of us. And I think many of us use these words uh, interchangeably. We speak of responsibilities and obligations as though they were the same. Actually, they're not. When we have an obligation, we have something that we face, something that we're going to have to do in the future. It doesn't relate to anything in the past. But here is the real difference. Oh, in incidentally, on, uh, on the word obligation, we have the same, uh, same sort of confusion because uh, we hear it said all the time that uh, uh, a person has an obligation. He has to do certain things. And then these obligations are uh, submitted to him. He's told that he has an obligation to support the Red Cross. Or he has an obligation to support uh, the military establishment. Or an obligation to support his, his church or whatever it may be. So we are told that the individual has an obligation and somebody else tells him what it is. And then he, he is also told, or we are told, that as far as responsibilities are concerned, they belong to the group. The group is responsible, but the individual has an obligation, you see. Now, I'd like to suggest that that's really not quite the best way to think about these words. And interestingly, when we get our words confused, we often confuse our concepts and our ideas, and then we get all muddled up, and we don't communicate properly. We don't really express what we mean to express. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when we're talking in terms of responsibility and ownership, we are talking about a condition that is automatic. A person is responsible for whatever it is that he has done in the past. He obviously isn't responsible for what hasn't happened yet. 
He doesn't own that action until it has occurred. He only is the owner of that which is already something that has occurred in the past, so responsibility, as the arrow indicates, comes right up to the present moment and stops. You're not responsible for your future. The future hasn't occurred. Now, when we get to obligation, here is the interesting thing. An obligation doesn't exist until you voluntarily assume it. To presume that I could stand here and tell you what your obligations were would to be to presume a completely immoral and improper condition. It would be to suppose that I could stand here and uh, say to you, well, uh, because you are present, you must do certain things or be uh, uh, morally at fault. But you haven't agreed to do anything. Why should you have to do anything just because I say so? Well, really, you shouldn't, you see. An obligation is something that you agree to face up to yourself. So all obligations are volitional. They are voluntary. And until you have volunteered, uh, you don't have one. Uh, this was a, uh, a very interesting uh, point that has uh, constantly crept up in the discussions we've had on the matter of human liberty and human behavior and so on. Uh, some years ago, in a uh, class I was conducting in Colorado, I had a young lady in the class, a very nice girl, uh, who um, became very concerned when I was talking about responsibility and obligations. And I, I saw her squirming and shaking her head a little bit. and and obviously not quite happy with what I was saying. So I braced myself. I knew she was going to uh, have something to say a little later. And she did. Uh, she said, uh, she finally raised her hand. She said, um, Mr. Lefebvre, I don't think I quite understand this uh, uh, business of responsibility and obligation as, as you're putting it forth. She said, it seems to me that, um, uh, well, she said, just imagine this condition. She said, let's suppose that the door to the classroom opens and a little orphan comes in. And we know he's an orphan. He has a sign on him. It says, I'm an orphan. Uh, please adopt me. And I'm four. See? Well, this, of course, would touch anyone's heart. And she says, now, if that classroom door opened now and such an orphan came in, you would have to adopt him, wouldn't you? I said, no. She said, oh, well, you'd have an obligation. I said, not me. Not my kid. Oh, she said, well, that's terrible. Uh, that, that, that's heartless. The child needs you. I said, maybe so, but I don't need the child. You know, I have my own. <laughs> All I can handle. Uh, more than I can handle, let's face it. Uh, well, she said, uh, you, well, you, you, clearly you owe it to the child. I said, I don't owe anything to the child. Oh, well, she, this, this is completely heartless. And I could see we were not going to get very far in this, uh, in this discussion because I, I could feel her, uh, you know, mentally retreating. I was not a very nice fellow. Obviously, I should... Uh, like the child. Well, I told her I, I have nothing against the child, but I said, you're here too. You adopt him. You like him better than I do. Uh, well, she said that wasn't fair. I couldn't change the story that way. She wanted to hook me with the child. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I, I didn't quite know how to handle this, but I, I thought uh, I've got to think of something here to deal with this poor girl um, who obviously was suffering from internal uh, uh, heart bleeding. And um, so I, um, uh, I remembered uh, an event that had happened only shortly before uh, I was uh, acting as the editor of a daily newspaper in Colorado, and I'd had another lady come in who had apparently had much the same problem. And this one was really something. You, you would hardly believe it. This girl came in just as tense as uh, a piece of... Uh, of um, wire that you use uh, in a piano, you know, to, uh, the interior workings of a piano. She was tuned up tight. I think that's the current phrase anyway. She was uptight. Boy, she was uptight. She walked in and it just, you know, uh, if I'd have touched her, she'd have twanged. <laughs> well, anyway, I didn't touch her. Uh, I, uh, I got a chair for her and I asked her to please be seated and, uh, uh, I asked her, what in the world may I do for you? And she said, Mr. Lefebvre, I came in to see you about the murder. I said, murder? What murder? <laughs> you know, it was a small town. We didn't have many. And uh, 
She said, well, you had it in the paper uh, just the other day. Well, I couldn't remember uh, ever having anything like that in the paper, but she was so tense that I didn't want to argue with her. So I said, uh, let's get the file on the papers and, uh, and find out what it is uh, uh, that we did run. So I got uh, some of the back papers out, and we started turning back through them. And sure enough, about two or three days before, we'd had a story of a murder, but it was one in Oklahoma City. And uh, I was in Colorado, and of course, uh, I, I had assumed that she meant a local murder, and I was sure there hadn't been one. So I said, oh, this murder? I said, well, uh, what do you know about this murder? I said, are, you, are you related to her? Do you happen to know the victim? She said, oh, no. I said, well, um, are you related to her? Do you happen to know the murderer? She said, certainly not. She was indignant. I said, well, the lady, you came in to see me about this murder. What do you want to see me about? And she said, well, Mr. Lefebvre, I want to see you about it because you and I were partly responsible for it. I said, now, wait just a minute. Hey, you can't hang that on me. I've got an airtight alibi. I never left town. I was here all the time. I said, I can't answer for you, but as for me, I had nothing to do with it. She said, well, I don't mean it that way. She said, you and I are a part of society. And that murder happened because of a failure on the part of society. And therefore, to some degree, you and I were responsible for it. And I said, you've got to be fooling. But she wasn't. She was really all dedicated to this idea. Well, I started tr denying my any implications. Really, I felt quite innocent uh, about this affair. As a matter of fact, I'd never even read the story before. And uh, uh, the more I denied having anything to do with it, the more involved she became in, 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 in insisting that I had. Uh, oh, she said a very interesting thing. She said, both of us are equally responsible, especially you. <laughs> <laughs> An interesting touch. And uh, I said, how come especially me? And she said, well, you're an editor and you can influence more people, so you're more responsible, although we're equally responsible. So um, I, I, I finally uh, said, well, we, we've got a different view here. But I said, let's assume that you're right. If you are right, then it follows that you and I are also, to some degree, responsible for the murder over in Hong Kong. She said, was there one there? I said, take a chance, lady. It's a big town. You know, <laughs> there could have been one. And uh, so she took a chance. She started thinking about it. And she said, um, after a bit, she said, I, uh, I, I don't think we could be responsible for murder clear over that far. You know, pretty far away. I said, I'm with you. I don't think we were. I feel, you know, clean about it. Um, I said, uh, what about the murder in uh, Bangor, Maine? She said, was there one there? I said, think big. You know, they happen. <laughs> or they may happen. Uh, would we be responsible for one if it happened in, uh, in Bangor, Maine? She said, oh, I don't see how we could. She said, this is what you meant about Oklahoma City, isn't it? And I said, yes. She said, you know, you're right. We aren't responsible for murders in Oklahoma City. We're only responsible for the ones in Colorado. <laughs> and, you, you know, that, this, was the, this was the best I could do with it. But anyway, I told this story to the girl in the class. And I said, I wonder if you haven't gotten the idea that responsibilities relate somehow to the needs of other people. But they don't really, because if you're going to operate on that basis, why then the needs of people all over the world are so vast that none of us could ever learn to stand up and walk straight. We could never get to the place where we could pay our own bills or manage our own affairs. We'd be so involved in being obligated and responsible to everybody else that we'd never go anywhere. Are there any questions any of you'd like to ask at this time? If some of the comments by President Lefebvre have been interesting to you, if they have piqued your curiosity and you want to know more, about the programs offered by Rampart College, write or phone for further information. The address is Rampart College, First Western Bank Building, 4th and Main Streets, Santa Ana, California, 92701. Or phone area code 714-835-2500.
life is real. It can be beautiful. Men who know the truth.